Hey, Cameron here with Seabutters Tech. Now, I've been having a fun time reviewing Asus notebooks recently. Um, I, you know, I'm kind of known as like the Surface Pro guy. I look at all the Surface Pros as they come out and I still really love the Surface line of devices, but I think Asus, especially more than any other manufacturer right now, is doing really cool and interesting things. I mean, call this what you want, but interesting, is at least gonna to come to anybody's lips when they look at this thing. So anyways, uh, for the past couple years at this point, uh, I really have daily driven this guy right here, the X13. And the reason I do that is because it, it has pen support. It flips around into a tablet super easily. It is an okay tablet. It's, you know, kind of heavy, but you know, it's no Surface Pro 9 but it works great for that. Uh, but overall, when you don't want it to be a tablet, it is an excellent notebook in general. I've done videos on this. The Z13, especially this acronym edition, is very fun, very performant with the 4070 in it. And um, I love the styling, I think it's really cool, but it suffers the same thing as any other Z13. It's, it's, it, the kickstand design in a Surface Pro device is not as unwieldy as it is here because this is just, it's a very heavy device. This is the, the tablet and and even this acronym version, if you rip off the, even if you take off the, the, the keyboard cover, it still is heavier than this X13 in general. So it's just, it's a fat boy and it's unwieldy. I, uh, you may be able to hear my voice. I caught COVID uh, and I had to spend a lot of time in bed this week. And I started out with the Z13 and ended up pulling the X13 back out just because it's just so much easier to, to use. But I'm kind of getting caught in the weeds here. I've talked about this in my past videos many times before because I'm not here to talk about either of these. Someone blew me up yesterday, not yesterday, maybe day before yesterday, told me about this machine. And I'm super excited to talk about it. And the weird thing about it is it's not a tablet convertible, which if you watch my channel, I don't think I've ever looked at a non-tablet convertible. So what, why am I excited about this? Well, we'll get to that. This is the ZenBook Pro 14 OLED. And it's got 4060 and 4070 options for it. But the cool thing about it is I consider it to be almost something of an X14. We've got the X13 and X16, but this, if you look at it, looks like the closest thing that you could possibly have to an X14, except it does not have uh, the ability to flip all the way around. It's not a convertible yoga style tablet but it does have pen support. So that's why I'm still like, it's still in the game for me, you know, cause I could still draw on it if I really wanted to. Um, the other thing it doesn't have is the XG mobile port. But other than that, we'll go through it, but every single spec on this thing is really nice. And we're gonna go through it and unbox it and take a look at it today. So of course I'm being silly when I'm like wanting to call it the X14. This is the Asus ZenBook Pro 14. And let's go ahead and open it up. Technically the Zen 14 OLED, it does have a OLED display that is 2880 by 1800, which is even higher resolution than what we're seeing on the Nebula displays in the ROG line. But uh, comes in a very nice package here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the device just briefly before we see what else is in here. So take a look at this. You've got a ridge here. You've got some feet and plenty of ventilation on the back there. So nice looking device. It's a very nice size. Um, I did review the ZenBook 14, sorry, ZenBook 15 Flip OLED, which is also a nice device, but this is a little bit newer. And this has NVIDIA graphics in it. This has an RTX 4060, but the 4070 will be available soon as well. Uh, but let's see what else we get in the box. 
So, this looks like just a bit of advertising. Nothing under there. We've got uh, user guide, warranty card, that basic fluff. Nothing over here. Should have the AC adapter. Now this is a power brick not unsimilar to uh, the G14 type power brick. It is a 200 watt power brick. Pretty thin, uh, but you know, it's it's a decent sized power brick, but it is flat and thin. So it's not as small as what you get on the X13 or Z13, but it is not a huge power brick by any means. Okay, so let's let's get to the main event here. Let's look at this device. I'm going to pull the sticker off. You can see it has what they call uh, tech black, is what they're calling this finish, and it it's kind of cold right now, so it does kind of pick up condensation, but it's not picking up fingerprints really, which I I've heard from a lot of people that they liked that about it. Okay, so it is a pretty nice device. One thing you'll notice is it does have very prominent feet. It could have been a lot slimmer like the ROG Flow things, but because it's not something that flips around into a tablet form, they opted to put pretty large feet on it, which is good. It's going to be good for performance. It's going to be able to get a lot more airflow in here, especially if you have one with a 4070 in it. Uh, but let's talk about the overall specs at this point. So we've got a Core i9-13900H processor. So same processor you're finding in uh, the Z13 of 2023. Uh, great chip, um, 14 cores, 20 threads. And uh, that's, that's fairly substantial for something of this size. This is 1.6 kilograms. <clears throat> And it's it's pretty light. Like it it is very light. It's definitely it's actually lighter than the acronym Z13. This is definitely heavier than this thing right here. And we'll we'll get into some some spec comparisons uh, side by side in just a second here. But it is a very clean, good looking machine here. So let's go ahead and look at. The angle, this is as far as an angle as you get on this machine. It does not bend back to 180 degrees, which is too bad. Uh, but uh, I'm going to have to play with it for ergonomics and see how I feel about it for pen, because it does support pen. Now, uh, the graphics in this is either a 4060 or 4070 with 8 gigabytes of RAM. And you get the 14.5 inch 2.8K display. It's OLED. It's a 1610 aspect ratio, which is good. Um, ideally, <laughs> 3 2, it would be my ideal, but that's just fine. It also comes in 16 and 32 gigabyte configurations. However, the cool thing about this device is versus these two, the X13 and the Z13, this actually has a 2280 SSD and it has a, a user configurable SODIMM slot, which means that you can actually upgrade this machine and you could use a very large, like eight terabyte NVMe SSD in this thing if you wanted. So let's go ahead and look at the ports. So. This does take a power adapter, 200 watt total AC brick, um, HDMI uh, display, USB-A 3.2, and then on the other side, you get a Thunderbolt port, a USB-C 3, and a full-size SD card. So a lot of, lot of capability, a lot of configuration, it is really thin. Like, I mean, if you don't account for the feet, it is a very thin device. 
So I'm really interested to see how well it performs and how well it can maintain performance. Uh, the other thing it will do is power delivery over these USB-C ports, but we're gonna have to take a look in just a second here and see how fast we, they can actually charge and how well it performs when on the USB-C. That's something we'll be looking at. So there we go, really svelte package. And the other cool thing is this, this is a dial pad. And you can use this, uh, and it has support for Adobe programs, as a little kind of like dial wheel that you can uh, choose different tools with. So, it seems pretty cool. Here's a camera and mic test of the ZenBook Pro 14 OLED. I do have a lot of bright lights in here, uh, so it could be kind of a worst case scenario. So there you go. All right, let's do a little sound speaker comparison between the Zenbook and the Z13. Go ahead and start these at the same time. I'm gonna start the sound on the Z13 first. Now the Zenbook, you can hear the bass is a lot fuller, less tinny, and back to the C13. Just a more rich, fuller sound off of this. All right, so this is the USB-C input test. And first of all, you can see that it is capable of doing 100 watt power delivery. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. This is capable of 140 watts and it's only pulling up to about 100. Uh, but the really, really interesting thing here is this. The GPU only being powered by USB-C is pulling 110 watts in full performance mode. Now that's pretty crazy and you can see that uh, our charge level uh, is draining pretty fast. Um, so it does say that it's charging the battery but it I'm sure that it's not because you can see that percentage dropping. So there's no limits on this machine. There's no limits to uh, running the GPU over USB-C, which is a stark contrast to the ROG series, which does have that limit in place. It lets you, on the 2021 versions, only 65 watts and then 100 watt. But it only lets you use the performance modes, not the turbo modes. But this is letting us use turbo mode. Now, this is definitely not sustainable. So if we bump it down to performance mode instead of full speed mode, uh, this is ProArt Creator Hub. It's basically Armory Crate, but for Zenbook. Um, so if we look at that, now we're pulling about 90 watts on the GPU, and that's much more sustainable. Um, <clears throat> still not sustainable, though. Uh, the, the charge level is going to go down if we continue to operate uh, Firmark, you know. But if we switch over to... Uh, standard mode that's gonna limit the GPU to about 45 watts and that one yes we should be able you should be able to run standard mode indefinitely over USB-C in fact uh, my guess is if we watch that 70.1 percent yeah it bumped up to 70.2 so it is charging um, while we are in standard mode so um, really interesting power profiles, really interesting USB-C options that I was not expecting on this Zenbook Pro 14 OLED. So if you do want to use a pen with this, it does work fairly well. Uh, I have noticed that the palm rejection is not quite as good as the ROG Flow series. Uh, that's probably maybe just a software thing. 
Um, however, uh, you can't, obviously this is not a convertible tablet, you can't flip it all the way around. Um, so how can you possibly use this? Well, there's a few different ways. Um, and I've been playing around with them to see because I, I'm really liking this device. I may use it as my daily driver, uh, but I still need to take notes. So um, one of the ways you can do that is, uh, A, it's very simple. Fold it, place it against your chest, and now you're drawing or taking notes how, however you want to. And in fact, uh, the Z13 acronym comes with a strap to basically carry the tablet like this anyways. So, I mean, that is an option. It's, it's fairly comfortable. Um, and the other option is holding the, uh, the device in a portrait mode. So you would change in your display settings, change it to portrait, keep the changes, and now you're holding the device in portrait mode where standing, obviously this doesn't make any sense. I don't, I don't think it's, it's fairly awkward. It looks weird. However, um, when I was sitting on my couch, just lounging with this, uh, because the hinges doesn't fold all the way flat, it actually becomes very rigid uh, on kind of a triangle here and it it actually provides a decent space for note taking in portrait mode so between this type of thing and this type of thing I think it's gonna suit me for my needs um, I'm obviously not everybody and a lot of people who are artists way more than me because I just mostly mess around and do note taking. So this is going to work just fine for note taking. It has touch, it has pen. So that is a plus. Um, and uh, let's talk more about this machine. Um, I've been evaluating it. It does some really cool things. For one, uh, there's no limit to the USB-C power. It takes 100 watts, but it will let you use as much power as you want when USB-C is plugged in uh, to the point where you're draining the battery pretty quickly if you have this thing on full turbo mode. So that's pretty cool. A lot of capability. You would want to keep it in a, a lesser performance mode if you didn't want it to die while being powered over USB-C. But it, it lets you do whatever you want. That's really quite a neat thing. Okay, so let's take a quick look at performance for this guy here. Uh, now, it is available in 4060 and 4070 configurations. This one right here is the 4060 version. 4070 not quite available yet. Uh, but let's look at the benchmarks, and I'll tell you, this took the record uh, away from the Z13 acronym. Even though this is a 4060 and the acronym is a 4070, this took the uh, top rank on my Final Fantasy 15 1080p benchmark. And uh, pretty cool stuff. Final Fantasy 1080p benchmark... Uh, this, this graph here is wattage along the x-axis and score along the y-axis. And it kind of lets you see how well 4050s and 4070s and 4060s, how they compare to 3050 um, over time. But you can see this blue dot is the highest blue dot on the chart, which indicates the highest score. It did it at 100 watts, which was uh, the ZenBook Pro. And it got a score of 13680, which is really decent. That's actually the highest score I've recorded inside my benchmark set, which includes a lot of devices. Now, if we would have had the 4070 version of the ZenBook Pro, it would have been even higher. If you look at this green graph, we would kind of extrapolate that the score would have been upwards of 1500. Uh, so take that with a grain of salt, but the 4070 may have even more performance on tap for the same wattage. 
but it did beat out this 4070, which did, uh, sorry, the 4070Z13, which did 13.535. So even though the Zenbook Pro is a 4060, it's as good as the Z13's 4070 because the Z13's 4070 is capped at about 65 watts. So that makes the 4060 more performant here. So really good scores. Uh, performance is great. Um, and again, you have you have all those different modes ranging from 35 watts to a 45 watt mode to a 90 watt mode to 110 full speed mode on <clears throat> the Zenbook Pro. So lots of different power flavors available to you. The only other benchmark that I had time to run, uh, again, this is kind of a brief overview. Uh, it's not a it's not a full review of this device, but uh, the Time Spy score. So it is a 4060, and uh, you would expect it uh, to be right around that 10k mark, and that's exactly what I saw right here. Um, so right at 10k for both GPU. And CPU at 13900H seemed a little weak on the CPU. I may have to look into that a little bit more. Sometimes things are just so hot from the GPU that it it, it slows the CPU down a little bit. But <clears throat> again, if we would have had a 4070, it would get a little bit more performance. I mean, going from 10,000 to 12,000, it's something. I don't know if it would be noticeable in gaming, but there's definitely performance we had if you went with the 4070 version of this. And if you compare that to the Time Spy on the uh, Z13, you're right around 10,000, but just slightly better with the 4060 because it is full wattage here on the Zenbook Pro. So those are the performance figures. It, it looks really good. It looks right on par with what you'd expect for a 4060 at the wattages that it's pulling. So Okay, so let's wrap it all up. The Zenbook Pro 14 OLED. This is a device that caught me completely off guard. I thought, no, nah, there's no way I would use a device that is not a convertible tablet, right? That's just not what I do. But I did find that it's pretty, because it does, I mean, I would never do one that didn't have pen support and touch support, but if you hold it like this, it's really not that big a deal. I found I was able to do the things that I needed to do, holding it either up against my chest like this or opening it fully, and it kind of becomes a wedge. It's locked in position here, and you can actually hold it in the crook of your arm and do things in portrait mode like this. So my pen needs are taken care of. Um, now let's kind of compare this thing to the X13 and Z13 ROG series. So the first thing I want to point out is if you look at the X13 compared to the Zenbook Pro 15, they are literally the exact same depth. So very similar in size. There's just a, a little bit longer edge on the Zenbook Pro, but what that gives you is that larger 14.5 inch OLED display, which really is nice. Um, I, I used the X16 ROG for several months when I was evaluating that uh, particular model, and I really, I didn't like how heavy it was, um, but I did like the screen size when I was playing games. It just looked amazing. And moving back to a 13.5 inch display on the Z13 and X13 was a little bit of, it felt like a downgrade. But this 14.5 inch display looks amazing. Uh, the persistence is extremely low. If, uh, OLED is almost, almost nothing when it comes to persistence. Now, don't get me wrong, the 165 Nebula displays on the ROG devices this year look amazing they have very low persistent there's very little ghosting unlike some of the previous year's models but this oled i mean there's something called motion resolution motion clarity and when you're playing a game um sometimes things just i mean if something's moving fast it's hard to pick out the details not on this you feel like you're looking right through a window at things it is 
it's amazing. So this OLED, even though it's 120 hertz, uh, I really like it to the point where I would say I actually like, for the size, I definitely like it more than the, the Z13 and the X13, just because you get that little bit extra inch of display. But uh, versus the Nebula with the 165, the 120 hertz is so clear. It's it's amazing. It's great. I have no no qualms with it. I wish I could show you, but it's hard to do through the camera. But if I mean, when you're looking at a really nice OLED display and you grab a window and you kind of move it back and forth and it's just smooth as silk, you it oh, it's a great display. The UFO test that we've uh, done with it. Uh, when you run the UFO test, you take a picture of it. It looks like it wasn't moving it at all. It looks like a, a static image. It's really good. So, um, while I, I'm going to give this piece of advice, if you're someone who is waiting for, for the 2023 X13 to come out and you don't need the ability for it to flip into a tablet and you don't need an XG mobile port, with those conditions, I would say I would heavily look at this device because you're gaining so much. Uh, you get the larger display, you get a fully featured GPU that goes up to 110 watts on that GPU. Uh, you're getting the little dial pad, which is not super cool, but it's something. Um, you also get the ability to expand your storage and your memory. This will take a 2280 M.2, which you could put up to eight terabytes in here. Uh, <clears throat> you can do up to 48 uh, gigabytes of RAM in this thing. So yeah, it's just a really nice device. And if you use your computer more in this mode, uh, it, it might be the one to get. It's very light. Uh, it has a nice finish, easy to carry. It has those feet that kind of bump it off uh, the ground. So it's kind of a trade-off. If you need XG Mobile or need the ability for it to truly turn into a tablet, <clears throat> uh, then you really want the X13. If you want a bigger display, expandable RAM, uh, expandable SSD, and a fully featured full wattage GPU, the Zenbook Pro 14 is a great pick. So yeah, my 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 decision making is is really really been thrown for a loop because I was 100% sure I was going to be sticking to that 2023 X13 when it came out. Now I'm not so sure. This display just looks amazing. The performance is great. And I had no plans to buy a 4090XG mobile. So because this still supports pen, I think that I can deal with the fact that I'm going to have to get a little bit creative when I do my note taking, holding it like this. Um, but it's really not that big a deal. So I, I really think I might stick with this thing here, the Zenbook Pro 14 OLED. Uh, don't worry though, I'll still get the X13 in to review and compare against it. But uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Zenbook Pro 14 OLED. And I was surprised by this device. I hope you were too. Let me know down in the comments if you'd ever heard of this device or if you uh, have some good ideas after watching this video on what you're going to do for your next laptop purchase.